Whatever you do, do not get into water cooling. It will ruin your life. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so I've been exclusively water cooling my CPUs and GPUs for a good number of years. In fact, I think we're going on nearly a decade where I absolutely refuse to use air cooling, and it's because I believe that water cooling was so much better than air cooling, and in some ways, I will admit water cooling does have its advantages, but today guys, I'm going to try and convince you that water cooling, especially custom water cooling, but even potentially AIOs can be a colossal waste of money and you might actually be better off air cooling. So let's go ahead and get into it, starting off first with custom water cooling, as I do believe this is a point where I think most people are going to agree. Now don't get me wrong, I've done custom water cooling in the past and I do think it can look super nice and in some cases it can improve your performance performance substantially as well as definitely all the time substantially decrease your temperatures but guys here's where the problems start because to be honest with you most modern gpus and cpus not only don't really benefit from reduced temperatures but even if you do actually massively reduce the temperatures and massively overclock the cpus or gpus oftentimes they don't really noticeably increase in terms of performance i mean we're talking about usually around 10 percent more performance and maybe your system gets quieter maybe it doesn't we'll talk about that in just a second and you put in all this time and money to put together this custom water cooled build and while I do think that custom water cooling can be an art form in and of itself and can definitely also be a conversation starter and if you really love the process of custom water cooling hey more power to you I think a lot of people believe it's going to be this massive performance increase and their PC is going to get way way better and quite frankly guys my experience has been most of the time these days that's not true now in the past when GPUs and CPUs did gain a lot more performance and had worse coolers out of the box yes of course you were going to get a massive performance increase by custom water cooling but again i just don't think that's the case anymore there have been a couple parts like the 7900 xtx with a massively increased power limit on the bios that have actually benefited or sometimes certain intel cpus can benefit significantly as well especially if you delid them but most parts such as almost every single ryzen part most amd parts as well as basically every single modern nvidia graphics card just simply don't benefit Benefit. And again, you might be saying, well, what about the noise? It's going to be way quieter. And again, it actually might not be that much quieter. Yes, you can run your fans quieter, but that pump noise might actually be more severe than the fan noise itself. Now, of course, if you get really high quality pumps or you just make sure to basically bin yourself the best pumps and fill them absolutely to perfection, then you might actually not have too much noticeable pump noise. But there is a significantly increased chance at least in my experience of getting more coil wine out of your graphics cards when you remove its cooler and put on a water cooler so you go through all this time all this money to try and make your system more performant and actually less noisy but at the end of the day it's not even noticeably more performant you're potentially risking stability through overclocking and it maybe isn't even more quiet it might actually be more loud thanks to pump noise and coil wine which i actually find to be more annoying than the fan noise itself so that alone I think makes custom water cooling very very niche these days I just simply cannot recommend doing it anymore I thought it was the greatest thing not too long ago but the more time I spent doing it the more I realized it's just a huge hassle to be draining your loop to be putting in new stuff all the time and potentially risking voiding warranties on parts but now let's talk about the more popular version of water cooling and that's AIOs and I'll definitely give you guys that AIOs can still be really good and depending on the price might actually be worth it in your situation but overall again it can still be a money pit now unlike custom water cooling where every single part is absolutely extremely overpriced and constantly feels like it needs to be changed out and cleaned 
AIOs don't have that much of a problem, but they still can fail. And I have had a number of them fail on me, and this means that rather than just getting one air cooler and potentially having to replace the fan every, you know, two to 20 years, who knows how long it's gonna last, well, you could potentially have to replace your entire water cooler, which is not gonna be 10 or $20. That's gonna be anywhere between like 80 usually to like 200 plus dollars, depending on the AIO that you get. Now, there are things about AIOs that I do like better. They are typically a little bit cooler than the air coolers, and they do allow better access to the RAM. So I think for those reasons, if that's what you're looking for, AIOs still can be a good choice. But again, if you're having to replace them every every one to five years, well, you're gonna spend a lot more money on that rather than just getting new standoffs for your old air cooler. And I do think that is a bit of a problem. We're talking about a difference of hundreds upon hundreds of dollars over 10 or 20 years versus, you know, maybe spending 10 or $20 once or twice to get new standoffs or replace the actual fan itself. And of course they can fail catastrophically leading to leaking in your PC. Now I've never actually experienced this and I wouldn't consider it to be a massive concern, but it is still something that potentially can happen, especially if you're shipping it and maybe it gets a little bit damaged. So it is a little bit of an extra risk for, in my opinion, usually a pretty small reward when it comes to the extra cooling performance. And again, they still have pumps and depending on the quality control as well as how old it is, you can actually get pump noise that makes it more noisy once again than an actual air cooler. So guys, I do wanna say, you know, overall, I still do like water cooling. I don't have a problem with AIOs, but do keep in mind that while you can potentially maybe get a little bit better performance or cooling performance, out of these AIOs and it can look really cool, stuff like that. I just, I gotta say, I definitely don't recommend custom water cooling anymore unless you have a specific need for it or really love it. And even when it comes to AIOs, if you want an AIO, do it more so I'd say for the looks as well as the ease of access when it comes to RAM because the actual performance increase you're gonna get on a modern CPU or GPU even is just not gonna be that substantial. So don't be spending hundreds of dollars more to get a super big water cooler to be trying to eke out, you know, another one, two, maybe even at most 10% more performance when you could possibly just go ahead and buy an air cooler, slap it on and keep it for years and years and years and years. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that water coolers are definitely worth it over air coolers? Or do you think because of the diminishing returns of modern CPUs and GPUs that in most cases, it's probably not worth the extra hassle and the extra expense. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.